synthetic mouse embryos with a beating heart and an embryonic brain grown in the laboratory. Researchers from Cambridge and Caltech have grown a mouse embryo without sperm or egg cells. In their experiments, they used only stem cells. The embryos grew for 8.5 days, long enough for some organs to develop, a beating heart and even the bud of a brain. Published in the journal Nature, the work of scientists from the University of Cambridge and the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, could advance fertility research and even enable us to grow tissues and organs for transplantation. They will also allow scientists to delve into developmental mechanisms and better understand the formation of birth defects. Earlier this month, scientists in Israel published similar findings. They managed to grow mouse embryos from skin stem cells. The embryos also developed for 8.5 days and also developed beating hearts and brain buds. Anyway, one of the co-authors of the new publication is Jacob Hanna, the lead author of the paper published in early August. In the new study, the researchers also used an incubator developed by researchers from Israel. The embryo model was developed without egg and sperm cells. Instead, the researchers guided the development of three types of stem cells from the early stages of development to the point where they began to interact with each other. One type of stem cell gave rise to an embryo, while the other two developed into placental tissues and the yolk sac. For an embryo to develop successfully, there must be a dialogue between the tissues that will become the embryo and the tissues that will connect the embryo to its mother. In the first week after fertilization, these three types of stem cells develop. One will eventually become the body's tissues, and the other two will support the development of the embryo. One of these last two types will become the placenta, which connects the fetus to the mother and supplies oxygen and nutrients. The second will become the yolk sac in which the embryo grows and receives nutrients from it during its early development. During the experiment, the researchers watched the three types of stem cells interact and physically bond with each other in glass vials. By inducing the expression of a specific set of genes and creating a unique environment for these interactions, the researchers were able to get the stem cells to communicate with each other. The stem cells self-organized into structures that progressed through successive developmental stages until, after eight days, the synthetic embryos had neural tubes, digestive tracts, beating hearts and brain foundations, with well-defined subsections including the forebrain and midbrain, as well as a yolk sac, in where the embryo develops and receives nutrients in the first weeks. This is the most advanced stage of development achieved so far in a stem cell-based model. The embryos took 8.5 days to develop, nearly half the length of a typical mouse pregnancy, usually around 20 days. The process is far from perfect. Only a small fraction of the cells develop the characteristics mentioned above. However, the work still represents a major advance that will help scientists see organ development in unprecedented detail. The experiment was attended by Professor Magdalena Zernica Gertz from the University of Cambridge and the California Institute of Technology who has been studying the mechanisms of development of mammals and their embryos for years. This has been our community's dream for years and the main goal of our 10-year work, and we've finally done it, said Zernika Gertz. This opens up new possibilities for studying the mechanisms of neurodevelopment in an experimental model. We prove this in the publication by removing a gene already known to be essential for the formation of the neural tube, the precursor to the nervous system, and for the development of the brain and eyes. 
In the absence of this gene, synthetic embryos exhibit the known defects in brain development, as in the animal carrying this mutation. This means we can start applying this kind of approach to many genes with an unknown function in brain development. Our mouse embryo model develops not only the brain, but also the beating heart. All the components that make up the body. It's just unbelievable that we've come this far. The team, led by Zernika Gertz, conducted an experiment in which they knocked out a gene called PAX-6, which plays a key role in brain development. When they eliminated this gene, the mice's heads did not develop properly, mimicking what happens in natural embryos lacking this gene. The result shows, as Zernika Gertz put it, that the system is indeed functional. For scientists, such synthetic models have many advantages over natural embryos created from eggs and sperm. Because they grow outside the uterus, they are much easier to observe. They are also easier to manipulate with genome editing tools. This makes them useful for uncovering the role of different genes in birth defects or developmental disorders. Hannah hopes to use the technique to develop human synthetic embryos that could be the source of new organs and tissues for people who need them. Zernika Gertz, on the other hand, plans to use this model to understand why some pregnancies fail. This period of human life is very mysterious, so being able to watch it happen, access individual stem cells to better understand why so many pregnancies fail and how it can be prevented, is quite unique, Zernika Gertz said. Dot. This early period is the basis of everything that happens in pregnancy. If something goes wrong, the pregnancy will fail, she added. Both in the study of the Israeli team and the group led by Zernika Gertz, the resulting synthetic embryos closely resembled natural embryos albeit with some minor differences and defects in tissue self-assembly. However, in both experiments, a very low percentage of stem cells actually gave rise to embryos, suggesting that the efficiency of both systems could be improved. In addition, no set of synthetic embryos survived beyond the ninth day of development a hurdle that would need to be overcome in further research. The reason for the blockage of further development is unclear. But it may relate to defects in the formation of certain types of placental cells. Over the past decade, Zernika Gertz's team has been studying these earliest stages of pregnancy to understand why some pregnancies fail and others succeed. While current research has been conducted in mouse models, scientists are developing an analogous model of human embryo development to understand the mechanisms behind key processes that otherwise could not be studied in real embryos the stem cell embryo model is important because it gives us access to the developing structure at a stage that is usually hidden from us due to the implantation of a tiny embryo into the mother's uterus. This accessibility allows us to manipulate genes to understand their developmental roles in a model experimental system, Zernika Gertz said.